Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am your GM, Eric Campbell, and I'm going to be running this group of wackos through an adventure that I am titling The Past Awakens. Uh, before we jump into anything else, though, let's go ahead and go through our players and uh, talk about who they are and get an idea of what their Autobot is and who they are playing. I'm going to start with you, Latia. Why me? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. It's like a pick. <laughs> oh, good you. Uh, hi, my name is Latia Jaquise. I am the Community Relations Coordinator at Montecook Games, as well as a, a freelance game designer and streamer of many things. I Rivals of Waterdeep, other things, stuff. Um, I am playing a Derailer, um, an Autobot who has never seen Cybertron in their life, aside from in, uh, in uh, Wisps of Dreams while they sleep and uh i'm an e-bike that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> all right uh quincy hi i'm quincy Sursmith. uh i am a voice actor a podcast producer and i also play with uh, eric on the stream punks um i uh i'm playing the character of sleeper uh sleeper is a kind of half slacker half overconfident former racer from cybertron uh who was uh, brought to Earth and then um, was put into inactive storage, uh, maybe perhaps literally in a storage unit, uh, uncovered, allowed to kind of hang out and get dusty uh, uh, in the 90s, uh, and uh, takes on the form of a maybe dusty, maybe sun damaged uh, mid 90s uh, Japanese style like coupe that can secretly be a sports car but looks like a really old beat up coupe in nice uh, clean white or it used to be clean white and now a dusty sun damaged white uh anything to help rationalize uh, uh, that my car which needs cleaning could be an autobot um helps uh b tell us about you um yeah so if we're gonna talk about race cars i'm playing a real race car um <laughs> but hey y'all be Zelda, they, them. I am uh, your non-binary busy bee. I'm a podcaster, streamer, and the community manager for Alchemy RPG. Um, but like I said, I am the most fashionable, suave, sleek, red race car. Because like this Autobot has also never been to Cybertronian, but that doesn't matter because when you live your entire life on Earth, you become just like, I want to say a pop star, but like the car version of it, you know? I'm just like the idolized kind of car. And oh I'm going to be called, uh, 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 my name is Carmessi. Um, all right. And finally, our friend, uh, a dear friend who has also been running some uh, G.I. Joe here for Renegade, uh, Jason Charles Miller. Let us know who you are and what are you playing? Hey, how you doing? Like Eric said, I'm Jason Charles Miller. I'm a musician and a voice actor and an RPG streamer. Uh, I am playing Processor. He's a recycling truck. He's going to tell you all about recycling as much as he possibly can. But uh, he is a... Uh, he was was originally from Cybertron, uh, so he has distant, distant memories of Cybertron that he may or may not uh, tie into his recycling knowledge. But he is going to hopefully be the ta our tank and healer of the group. That's my general idea behind him. Nice. Um, all right. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, just a bit of a fun fact, Jason Charles Miller has been the voice of Optimus Prime. And um, and today we are, uh, we, so we are honored to be playing with an actual Autobot on our cast. So thank you, Jason, for blessing us with your presence. So I'm excited to get started. Uh, I, of course, uh, Eric Campbell, I am the GM storyteller and co-owner of the Streampunks RPG group with Sam DeLev and Elisa Pearl. Um, and uh, yeah, I am. I'm just going to jump into our narrative. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank Renegade Games for an opportunity to run this game. I've been a fan of Transformers since I was a kid, since I sat in the movie theater and awkwardly looked at my dad when I heard Ultra Magnus start swearing. I was just a little boy when the movie came out. It was amazing. It was awesome. It is one of the greatest soundtracks of all time and uh, kind of fell off my fandom around the early 2000s. And then... Uh, Things have changed. I'm jumping back into Transformers and running this game has given me an opportunity of catching up with the game lore and uh, the world lore and everything ever since. Um, it is pretty rad and I'm grateful to have a chance to run the game. Let's go ahead and jump into our narrative. 
<laughs> there are a few places in Portland, Oregon, where the population is so dense, there's even for a robot in disguise, it's not easy for an Autobot to move around. But there are places in Washington state that are a little bit more remote, that aren't watched quite as closely where the speed limit signs are there mostly as a suggestion and it's here where our story is going to open up here where sleeper and carmesi have been constantly using this open space to pass the time and test each other on who is faster than who and it has developed into a rivalry that processor and derailleur have witnessed again and again and again and processor on more than a few occasions you've had to remove dents and scratches from both of them as on more than a few occasions sleeper or carmesi i'll let y'all i'll let y'all tell me if it's happened on purpose but there's been a few spin outs a few crashes i don't know how intense the rivalry is but since we have since we have two racers, one from Cybertron and one who's never seen Cybertron and doesn't give a ding and just wants to race. Uh, tell me, in the time that you guys have racing, you all have raced on these roads together. Have you ever had a spin out on purpose? Was it, was it, uh, did it ever become road rash? Did you all ever get a little smashy with one another? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Sleeper. You look like a mess. I have to drive next to you. What difference does it make if I accidentally bump your your bumper? That wasn't you. <laughs> that hmm? that dent was there from thirty years ago. When I I, I, I worked really racer. I worked really hard. R really, like the one that's shaped like the banana. Yeah, uh, it was a weird race. I can curiosity. knock that back in for you if you want. I know we knocked it out, but I could make it again if it's uh, some sort of sentimental thing for you. Uh, you know, we'll we'll deal with it if it becomes an issue. I want you all watching right now to picture three vehicles on the side of the road having a conversation right now. Um, real quick, as we're doing this, um, Derailer, I'm going to say that you're there too. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, what I want you all to do right now for the audience and for ourselves so that we can picture this, um, I need all of you to describe. Quincy's already given us a good idea of what Sleeper looks like. Please describe to me what your alt mode looks like. And I'll start with you, Processor. What do you look like? What color? I mean, give us, an, uh, give us a picture. What color are you? What, how big are you? What are you? So Processor's alt form is a classic... The classic uh, green recycling truck that you probably see in a lot of neighborhoods uh, all throughout the U.S. White and green, the big payload in the back, the um, the, the arms that come out and pick up the mm -hmm. cans from the side. Um, just fits <clears throat> right in in, in uh, the Pacific Northwest, that's for sure. So, yeah. Nothing, all right, right on. <laughs> yeah, nothing... Uh, Nothing that would sh show you anything else than what you're looking at as a recycling truck. Okay. Um, Latia, please. I, I'm so eager for this. And Latia, I would <laughs> love to hear the description of derailleur because a lot of people may not know exactly what it is that your alt mode is. So please describe. Yeah. So uh, derailleur looks for all intents and purposes like a bicycle. Um, but she has a bit of a stockier body because she is an electric bicycle. So um, I don't know bike parts, so forgive me, but like the um, the bars in the middle that you mm. swing your leg over to get on, uh, they are a bit thicker because that's where a battery would be. Um, she is this kind of, uh, she looks like, an, like she's painted like an oil slick. So that blue, green, mm -hmm. purple uh, configuration of color. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And she's got extremely thick tires because uh, in the Pacific Northwest, there are a lot of trails that one can ride. Uh, so her tires are built for those as well as for the uh, the asphalt. Derailleur, I'm going to go ahead and add some lore to your character. Mm -hmm. You, you, if I remember correctly, you are not, you were, you've never seen Cybertron. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You were created yeah. here on earth. Mm -hmm. So you're one of the few Autobots that has been given stories about home and what Cybertron was like, especially in its glory days. You've probably heard Prime talk about it a few times to some of the younger Autobots of the home that you were all fighting to get back to one day. Um, you're a very unique Autobot in that 
you have adapted to a lot of the the er, the newest forms of transportation that the humans are using these days. So I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here and say that your size, you're probably one of the smallest Autobots in operation, uh, which is correct. great. You, <laughs> yeah, so you and a few of the others get along pretty well then, um, some of the Scout class bots. Um, oh, and that reminds me, um, when we get around to it, um, let's go ahead and also explain what what uh, your professions are like what what classes y'all are playing essentially so they can get an idea of of who it is that you guys are um but before we do that uh Kermesi, you've already described yourself as like slick like hot rod red uh mm -hmm. like what kind of Two what doors, kind of um look like uh, a like a really expensive body car. kit oh yeah um oh, yeah. um an obnoxious spoiler excellent um, I'm, I'm really i'm really pushing the limits of like the the words that i know uh -huh. um however sure. so there's something um latia you made me think about this um there's something in like the sports car racing world that's been happening the past five years um where electric cars are just like significantly faster um than like gas engines and so we have to kind of separate the races i think i want to be an electric vehicle for that same purpose um you know as somebody who was created on earth we are the most adapted to what the current um system is and that does give me a little bit of edge to be faster i mean we are literally autobots but nonetheless i really like that vibe um because that means i can be a little bit smaller too um i'm not gonna have as much uh bits take up all the space and um i'm gonna be so darn quiet uh however carmesi does make room room sounds to compensate <laughs> of course she does of course all right so Let's go ahead and do this real quick. Um, it's for the for the for the lot of you. It has been a very trying time because the four of you, even those of you who are from Cybertron originally, being brought online, Optimus Prime has been very cautious about risking exposure to humanity. Even though you're Cybertronians and conceivably one of the most advanced, if not the most advanced race in the universe. The truth of the matter is, is there's a limited number of you here on Earth. You guys crashed here over a million years ago. And your recent awakening has revealed that you are on a planet of some pretty fascinating biological creatures known as humans that have an astonishingly diverse and interesting culture. They sort of reflect a biological uh, counterpoint to the interchangeability that you as Cybertron Cybertronians get. Um, however, they're still in a very destructive period in their history where they're coming to terms with their own technology. They've reached a threshold where they themselves are learning as to whether or not they plan on surviving or not. They're in, as has been said, a technological adolescence. They only discovered the atom uh, just in the past hundred years, and already they're risking their own destruction. However, there are people that have been rising up and meeting the challenge. It's inspiring. And Optimus and the rest of the Autobots have found a, a fondness for humanity. Humanity. However, because of their volatile nature and the fact that they outnumber y'all a few hundred billion to one, Optimus has ordered every Autobot to remain hidden. Robots in disguise is the motto that is passed around from Autobot to Autobot. Everybody is to remain hidden from humanity at all times, and you are to do everything you can to avoid direct contact. That doesn't mean you can't take some time to yourselves up here on the highlands uh, in uh, Washington state where the racing is good out here on the roads. Um, right now, I'm going to say Sleeper and Carmesi are lined up on this winding road that goes up into the hillsides. There's lots of trees and forest areas around here, but this place is usually remote. Occasionally, you'll detect the incoming uh, signs of a human driving their families uh, through some of the parked areas. But for the most part, y'all have free reign. And right now, it's time for Sleeper and Carmesi to start putting to rest some of the challenges that they've made on each other. Um, mm -hmm. Derailer and Processor, you, once again, the both of you have been dragged out here to watch them race again in case one of them gets damaged or in case there's another argument about who won. Well, um, I think it's it's more processor has been dragged. Derailer loves coming up here because oh, yeah? 
there's oh. a lot of there's a lot of tra- like, a lot of trails. Yeah, it's a lot of trails. Like she doesn't necessarily love coming up here to watch them race. It's more as oh, if they're going to race again, this is an excuse for me to go trailing. Um, but she does do that thing where they're uh, set at the at the starting line, ready to go, and she um, comes a few feet out. And she pops a wheelie and is the ready, set, go. Okay, person. I love that. All right, y'all are up on the line. Then you've both Sleeper and Carmesi. You guys have pulled up right next to each other. Your <laughs> Carmesi, just your paint job, just glistening in the afternoon sun. The Autobot symbol bear, just blazing right on the hood of the car. And then next to you is Sleeper, who looks like has probably been on like a used parking lot for the past twenty years, and has just kind of like eroded away. Um, two of you, just the engines, just. <laughs> humming um and it's on you derailer whenever you say go and then when you say go i'm going to have sleeper and carmesi make driving skill tests yes excellent so yeah so derailer is in the front of them wheelie popped up and then um she's got a bike light on the front that blinks so it blinks once it blinks twice it blinks that third time and then she goes down on her wheel and they go both you make driving skill tests right away all right, so that's right. Um, a D20. It's a D20. Plus and then your you're skill it. die. Plus your skill die. And if you have a specialization, then you are going to roll that skill die plus every die underneath that skill die. Oh. Ah. Yeah, every single one of them. And you're going to pick I'm the highest I number. Pulled a bunch of them out. Okay. And so. don't forget to tell me what you rolled on the skill die because it matters. Um, if it, yes. To just give you a quick a heads up, um, if you roll the maximum number on that skill die... It's a crit. Oh. Except a D2. D2 doesn't count. If you roll a two on a D2, it's not a crit. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That was pretty disappointing to get anyways. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yay. Yeah. Instead of doing division, I will just use a coin as my D2. There you go. <laughs> this was pitiful. Um, I got a 10 on my D20. Uh, and the highest number on all my dice, well, the ones that I was rolling, was a three on my D4. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. How did uh, Sleeper do? Uh, well, I do have a uh, specialization in land driving. Oh, um, boy. Oh. So I got a 14 on my D20, uh, but similarly on my uh, skill die, I rolled a, uh, a a 2 on my D2, a 2 on my D6, and a 3 <laughs> on my D4. That's so literally what I So I will be using the 3. <laughs> okay, so what is your total then, Sleeper? 17. And what's your total, Carmisi? 13. 13. So, Carmisi, you were so revved up and ready to just leave Sleeper in the dust where Sleeper belongs. And as soon as that last light hits and derailleur just drops the front wheel, you spin out. Your yep. tires just start squealing as you accelerate way too fast. And uh, Sleeper just goes... Actually, can, so, because of that, because mm-hmm. of Sleeper style, once I notice the spin out, can I just slowly leave as if I'm leaving like a stop sign? <laughs> like, slow, oh, like it's a slow acceleration, God. even, and I don't even I don't even accelerate till it like I'm actually a good part way uh, way into the line. You're gonna right? troll Carmesi. <laughs> uh, oh, zero man. to a hundred pickup speed in two seconds, and this is what you're doing. And I hear a scream. Um, Looks like it was zero to zero still. So the chase, we're going to be using the chase rules here. So um, what happens is, is y'all are making driving skill tests. The winner is going to get a ba- a bonus standard action here, which you can use to increase or close the distance between two characters. So what happens is you're going to get that. You're going to get your standard movement action, which is you slowly coasting <laughs> out. And then you're going to get a bonus uh, move action, which is going to be you accelerating basically and blasting off forward. So immediately um, that first round, I'm guessing, uh, is it Carmesi or Carmesi? I want to make sure it's Carmesi, right? Whatever you like, want, Carmesi. I'm going to say because so. it's like Khaleesi. So Carmesi, yeah. basically, um, Sleeper, you basically race off and just get a good distance to the front. You are now going to be, um, you're going to be basically, you're going to be, Carmesi, you're going to be two links behind. This is a six round race because they used one movement action to get one ahead of you and another one to get a bonus ahead of you. So um, mm-hmm. this round, you are going to, oh, I'm sorry, you're going to be one link behind. Because you're going to okay. use your action to catch up. So let's go ahead and make another drive skill test as the two of you just and 
Processor and Derailer, you watch them both just a plume of smoke as Carmesi basically overdoes it as soon as the, the line <laughs> drops. And she, they, you see them, they, they kind of spin a little bit that back into the car, uh, just kind of swerves a little bit, and then they finally rock it off after Sleeper. Go ahead and make another driving skill check, if you would, please. Okay. Carmesi always gets really wrapped up in making the vroom vroom noises as opposed to going vroom vroom. Uh, they're so much more satisfying, especially when you don't have like a combustion engine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, oh, not actually exciting. <laughs> um. All right. What'd y'all roll? <laughs> you go first. All right. Uh, I rolled a 14 on my d20. Okay. Uh, my D6 got a 4, my D4 got a 2, and my D2 got a 2 also. So just so always give me your highest die. Great. Yeah. Uh, unless it's, it's the enough. crit, I guess, right? Yeah, unless it's a crit. So 14 plus 4 is 18. 18? What'd you get, Carmesi? Oh, I'm trying to see if I have anything else. I gotta <laughs> double check. I have a move called Range Reach. But I think that might be a little uh, chaotic, but I'll look that up in a second. This is uh, uh, butts. I got uh, a six uh, on the D20 and a six on my D6. <laughs> oh, you got a six on your D6. Which is that? Is that that's a crit. That is a critical hit. Yes. Okay. That's a crit. So Something what's your total? Good. 12. Okay, but you didn't succeed. So Uh-oh. you got a crit, but you didn't <laughs> you didn't actually beat him. So you are basically. So um, it was rainy today, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you a little your, slick. Um, so what do you guys have um, real quick uh, in your bot modes do you, or in your alt modes? Do you guys have a, a movement speed? Did you all record your movement speeds? Yeah, we. I think we both have 60. Oh, no, that's awesome. No. Uh, oh, you, you pick champion, right? Yeah. So yeah. so I picked lookout. So my origin is lookout. So they are still pretty speedy uh, in terms of skill set, but they uh-huh. are less. The top speed is lower than that of a champion. <laughs> Okay, and so in which case, I'm going to go ahead and kind of just say in the narrative that with that crit, Sleeper is not going to get an additional length on you, but you're not catching up to to him. And you guys roaring around the corner, both of you kind of speed, swerving, kind of drifting a little bit as you bank around a corner and start going up the hill. And at about this point, the sounds of your engine, your your internal uh, combustion, your not internal combustion, but your internal like propulsion just <laughs> starts becoming more and more distant. And processor, you and Derailus are just kind of quietly watching them disappear into the distance. Well, there they go again. You want to like jump on the back and we can sort of follow along slow oh yeah i love it i love riding in the back let's go <laughs> just the opening of <laughs> this recycling truck just she just hops on in there we do that sure all the time. bike just moves up on in <laughs> you start up processor pull out three point beep, push forward beep, beep, beep. pull out again <laughs> We'll get there sooner or later. Cut to you got both. You make a driving chest test. <laughs> <laughs> I am dying. I just like the gentle slowness of that scene. Oh my goodness. <laughs> also that whole time I could have been researching my thing, but I was too enamored. A uh, little derailleur just zooming on up. Oh my god, I have to get rid of this C20. This is pitiful. <laughs> three more rounds. There are three more rounds in this race. Whereas I'm using up the, the rolls. This is round three. So you're halfway there. Uh, this is my bag of D6. <laughs> you're going to switch out your dice? We, I need hit- this. Okay, so I rolled a three on my D20. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, one, no, one, Carmesi. and one. They are leaving you behind. Wow. Like, this is... I don't even want to look at this. I, uh, I rolled a, a 17, fumble? 17 plus four for a 21. <laughs> not a crit. Wow. Not a crit. All right. So you're going to wow. move your maximum rolls. Hold on. So what did you roll again, Carmesi? Your dice? What did the, what did your, the total? You, Do you want the beautiful total of four? I want the total, but I also want to know specifically what the, uh, what your D20 said and what the number of your skill die roll was. D20 was a three and every single one of my skill dies were a one. I feel good about where I'm starting off, you know? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so it's not a fumble, um, but you you are being left in the dust right now as Sleeper 
takes that drift just a little too skillfully and just cuts you off right in the middle of the road. Uh, Carmisi just, just, you just see a plume of white smoke <laughs> as uh, sleeper's tires just completely fill your field of sensory vision. Your I'm ocular sure sensors are just- exhaust fumes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the two of you bank around the corner, that's round three is gonna go to sleeper again. Wow. Um, sleeper at this point has pulled uh, two links in front of you and is starting to uh, is starting to gain some serious lead. You've only got three more rounds to pull this off. While this is happening, derailer in the <laughs> you are currently sitting in this dome like uh, ex- uh, interior of processor and you can hear processors voice all around you every time he <laughs> speaks. Um, you start getting notifications that you're receiving a transmission from oh, the arc. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to listen to it before I actually tell processor what's going on. Okay. As it comes in, you just, you hit the transmission click through as you accept the, the incoming and you hear Bumblebee say, derailer, this is home base. Are you there? Come in. Yes, I'm here. Hi. What's up? Hi. (laughs) Where are you right now? Uh, in processor is not a great answer. (laughs) (laughs) And just I, then you hear processor singing, separate your bottles and cans, separate your <laughs> bottles and cans. I'm just <laughs> hanging out with processor, that's all. Oh man, that guy. Don't get me wrong, I, I, processor's great. He's just, he's just so old. Uh, processor <laughs> is great. I don't know what you're talking about. But well, anyway. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I need you guys to get back to base as soon as you possibly can. Optimus wants to talk to everyone. Ooh, okay. So, uh, yeah, do you think? The- can I let Optimus know you're going to be on your way soon? Yes, 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 you can do that. There's a long pause and you hear Sleeper and Carmesia racing again, aren't they? Yeah. Do you have bets on any of them? Uh, I should have. Uh, Sleeper is... Carmisi is. I'm gonna say you're not who, who the winner's not gonna be who you think it is. Yeah, I think Carmisi's gonna win that. I'll bet you one inner John slice. I will bet you the one same. One inner John treat. One inner John treat, and that, you're on. Yeah, I, I, my, my bet's on sleeper. All right. See you when you get back to base. All right. Bumblebee cuts off. Cut two. Round four. Screen. Go ahead and make driving checks. Okay, okay. Uh, in that entire time, again, I got very distracted. Uh, <laughs> dice, 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 dice. Dice, dice, baby. Ooh, okay. Less good. Okay. Surrounded. All right, Let's Sleeper, what's this. your total? Uh, seven plus three for ten. Oh. Oh, this is my chance. Okay, hold on. I got your a chance, new Carmisi. You're two links behind. Okay, and I need a D2 for these been managing to stay close, but sleepers. Not 20. Not oh, 20. Take my glasses off. Yes. Ooh. Oh, this is not even a white dice. I can't see with my glasses. I thought this was a white mm-hmm. dice. It's mm-hmm. red. Doesn't matter. Um <laughs> The highest is a four on me, my D4. Okay, so you got uh, a nat 20, and then you uh, you rolled, so, That's so 24 high. total? Yeah. Okay, so then you are going to get a bonus action. So the two of you are staying neck and neck, but you're actually going to be able to move up one length. So now Sleeper is only a length ahead of you. Uh, I blink my my lights at you, my rear light, my tail lights. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, <so> basically, <laughs> Carmisi just pull is, you can feel Carmisi getting closer. You can hear the roar of, um, of that engine is just coming up behind um, you. The two of you speed around a corner. As you speed around the next corner, um, Sleeper, you see in that brief flash of an instance, what looks like Washington State Highway Patrol. Off in the distance, moving in your direction. Do we see that from behind when we're watching them? 
Yeah, as y'all are rounding one of the corners, you can look up onto the hillside. You can see what looks like a small vehicle that clearly is law enforcement coming over the hill. Oh. Uh-oh, um, derailleur. At this point, uh, y'all may not be aware of this, but one of the cool technologies that Optimus and the Autobots have developed here on Earth is hollow matter. Now, this is a technology that was available on Cybertron, but is being used extensively here on Earth because hollow matter allows you to literally create a holographic human version of yourself sitting in your driver's seat so that humans don't see a car driving itself. Um, so at this point, instinctively, everyone's hollow matters uh, hollow matter humans are going to materialize in the driver's seats. As that happens, I would require each of you to give me a description of what your human looks like. <laughs> and just this is on the fly. So, Quincy, we're going to start with you. Um, you see, uh, like a human with uh, big, uh, thick, like sunglasses, <laughs> um, uh, short uh, black hair uh, that's been like parted in the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, like a faded denim jacket, uh, like acid wash jeans. They're from the nineties, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, and a, uh, and a lollipop sticking out of their mouth. Yes. Excellent. I love this. They saw from far away that humans sometimes have things on their faces and, and like some sort of stick in their mouth. And, uh, mm-hmm. he looked yeah, it up and apparently lollipops are very popular. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it, and it's just, uh, and that person uh, is just like leaning back on, uh, like uh, on the wheel. Um, mind you, uh, if this comes up, the sunglasses don't come off. Uh, he's really bad at making eyes, so it's just sunglasses. Okay, it's just sunglasses. Amazing. If, if, if sunglasses are removed, it's just more sunglasses. <laughs> this is your mini, basically. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Carmisi, what does your human look like? Um, like some kind of high roller. Uh, very well dressed, like they're going to some kind of event. Uh, a lot of um, um, jewelry. Um, I think they wear a lot of silver. Like their their human has dark skin, so like there's a lot of silver to kind of contrast. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Maybe even like white braids um, that cascade down. So quite striking. Okay. Out of curiosity, uh, I would really like to know who's driving processor. <laughs> Uh, well, he's got a uh, big old green coveralls yes. with, uh, with yellow uh, reflectors on it all over, and a classic waste management type outfit. Uh, he's got he's got a long beard and just looks like he doesn't have a care in the world. He's been doing this for twenty five years, and he's just waiting for his retirement plan to kick in. <laughs> uh I'm just curious. Do you have like John Denver blasting on the on the radio? Oh, you got John. Denver. Thank God, I'm a country boy. Just blasting yeah, on the yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> He's a big Alan Jackson fan. Alan Jackson, you know, right on Chattahoochee over and over again. Oh God. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, that's going to be in my head for the rest of the day, Jason. Why did you do that? Um, All right. And uh, thankfully, though, Derailer, you're in the back of Processor. You don't have to hollow matter human writing on top of you. But if you'd like to give us a description of of who uh, your hollow matter human is. Uh, Well, she is. uh, She has uh, dark skin and uh, dreadlocks um, that are a bit uh, that are are thicker and a little bit more messy. Mm -hmm. Um, But they would all be smashed underneath a helmet, um, a rose gold helmet to kind of go along with the oil slick of the bike. Uh uh Um, And because it's the Pacific Northwest, like she's wearing like a poncho because it's always forever rainy. and she's got like a um, a shoulder, like a, a one shoulder bag on her oh, back. Like she, like she, she straight, she straight up looks like a bike messenger. She straight up belongs in Portland for yes. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, we're gonna go into this is round four, and you, um, Carmisa, you won that round, so you are now a length behind. Um, however, you guys with two rounds left, you see Highway Patrol coming up. What do you do? I'm going to have y'all make driving tests. If you're going to slow down, it's going to require a driving skill test to not basically uh, spin out because y'all are going your max speeds. 
I'm definitely not going to slow down, but thank you for offering. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Carmesi's going to gun it. All right. So uh, go ahead and make your driving checks for this round, then. It's up to y'all. Uh, I will slow down. All the red dice. <laughs> okay. Sleeper. <laughs> The rules player, you see, you remember Optimus's mandate. You guys do not attract attention. You immediately start decelerating. Go ahead and make your roll. Both of you. Heck. Oh my God. <laughs> did you did you botch? Did you fumble? Remember, you can spend a story point at any time to turn a one into any other die roll. Or if you want to gain a story point, you can just keep the fumble. <laughs> it's up to you. Uh, After you. uh so a one and then my highest is a three on my d6 um i also got a one on my one out of two so that's that i'm gonna take the fumble i want a fumble so i'm it's being a fumble. like go ahead um is it a fumble so it's a fumble if you rolled a nat one on the d20 and you didn't succeed is that correct jason yes okay and that's, okay, so you're going you're gonna to take the fumble then. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I love it. Okay, mm. and okay, so the results of the die roll then, Quincy, you, what was your total? Uh, I rolled a 17 on my d20 with a 5 on my d6, but I got a 4 on my d4, which gives me a crit. Which you crit. Okay, so then, Carmisi, you, you rolled a nat 1 on the d20. Uh-huh. And you failed the chest, which means you fumble the roll. <laughs> All right, here's what takes place. In that split second where you see rounding the bend uh, about a mile ahead of you guys, Sleeper, you see the highway patrol coming down the road. When you see the highway patrol, immediately it triggers an almost anxiety reaction, remembering what Prime told all of you. Robots in disguise. Do not let humanity know you are here. Do not attract attention. And for a split second, Sleeper, you realize you've been losing yourself in the adrenaline, quote unquote, adrenaline rush of this race, feeling the rush of uh, actually solidly handing it to Carmisi. In that moment, you kind of like slow down and control your deceleration as you try to sort of fly casual. And as you decelerate, Carmisi, you see the deceleration and see this as an opportunity mm -hmm. to pull ahead. You I'm going to win. You see the highway patrol and sleepers just doing exactly what sleeper does being a sleeper. You just accelerate immediately. And as you try to pull around sleeper, sleeper pulls back into the appropriate lane. Oh yeah. Lanes. Humans have lanes. As this is happening, you see that sleeper is actually about to clip the front part of your bumper. And as sleeper slows down, you swerve to get out of the way and you lose control of yourself. As the momentum begins to slide, you go drifting sideways, then overcompensate, try to bring yourself back around and go ramping right off the road. <laughs> You're airborne for a precious few seconds. Um, I'm going to need you to, um, let's see. I need you to make a might test with a difficulty of 14, please. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is cool. Um, and it's really important to know that, um, when we mail up our characters, we have some hangups, um, yes. as Autobots and I am vainglorious, oh which is such a beautiful portmanteau of just like, you know, it's not like I'm vain or anything. I just think that I'm incredibly smooth and fast and shiny and, um, I just need to win. No big deal. So I'm doing a might test. Let me ask you one, one real quick Ooh. question. Do you have any hard point weapons on you? Uh, no, because I didn't fill that out. Okay. <laughs> so you don't have any hard point weapons. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, let's see. So you, what, what is your, then you don't have to roll a might test at all. What is your speed right now? Uh, your maximum speed is what? Six. Oh, I hope I recorded that. Um, 60. Okay. Oh God! What is? What are your hit points? Uh, uh, three. Oh boy. oh boy! Let me double check. That's what it's in my bot mode. I didn't That's, track it. In that my sounds alt. about right. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna go. Into... All right, Carmisi. Here's what happens as you go off road and you're airborne. When you hit the bottom, you go into a field of trees and rocks. Unfortunately. It's the crashing rule. 
which means you're going to take one blunt damage for every 10 feet of movement you were on your last turn, which is a total of six damage. Now, I am going to mitigate this. Um, I'm going to have you make a might check. So here's here's how I'm going to here's how I'm going to do that. Um, what is your might score? Uh, okay, so yeah, I would say go ahead and um, you don't have any skills in might. No, unfortunately. Um, then here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to have you roll. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to have you roll a d20, just a flat d20 roll, and add your strength to the roll. And I'm going to set the difficulty at 14. Okay. I'm rolling the good dice. The one that's given me a 20 and a one. And it has given me a five plus five is 10. Okay. If I get knocked out, like I have friends that'll come get me. We literally have a recycling truck. Like you all see a cloud of dust up ahead and you watch Carmisi vanish into the cloud of dust. In your rear view optics, sleeper, you see Carmisi lose control, uh, almost trying to avoid clipping you, lose control, swerve off the side of the road. They try to compensate and they go flipping at a terrifying rate. Probably <laughs> slamming really into the ground, cool, end over end, end over end, end over end, slamming into a tree, slamming into a boulder, slamming into a tree and coming to a stop. And That's there's just her. this... None of that sounds of, good. Sarah, this is maybe the third time you've seen Carmisi or Sleeper uh, crash one of the other ones out. But at this time, it looks like maybe Carmisi did it to themselves. Carmisi, until you are repaired, you are defeated. You go offline. <laughs> <laughs> you had how so many hit sad. points? Three. Three. Yeah, you're down. You basically, you basically just ate it Ooh, on the side of the road. Out. All right. Um, to make matters more complicated, you see oh. the highway patrol start flashing their lights as they're racing up on you guys. Yeah. Oh, is um okay. At first, I was gonna ask, do I notice if the the police notice? And I guess so. <laughs> yeah, you see flashing lights, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of a giveaway. Yep. Oh gosh, a bit um, of a giveaway. Uh, I, we we can calm each other, right? Calm each other? Ca- ca- like communicate, like. Oh yes, you guys have communications. Y'all uh, are within range easily. I say, um, human police are on the way. I'm gonna try to distract them. Go ahead and grab Carmesi out of there, to the other two, uh, to the derailleur and processor. All right, but what are you gonna do to distract them? I'll figure it out. All right, we've heard this song before. Yeah. <laughs> So we go driving up, uh, up there. Now, could I could I pass the cops on the way, or are they so far ahead? No, you're going to be able to. You'll be able to pass sleeper and actually kind of intercept the cop. Okay, as they're coming up on you guys. Because what I'd like to do is, as a recycling truck, I would like to perhaps. Uh, use my hollow body to or my hollow form rather to convince the cops that maybe I'm going to call in the recovery team and the and the and the cleanup crew and they don't have to worry about it okay so I roll down my window and I'm like well I just see what happened up there I'm going to call it in I'll get the uh I'll get the recovery crew and the cleanup crew out here right now Marty so this is it. you pulling up to the side where you were and sleeper. You went off the road to check on. Well, to I, check on I said, I said what I said because I was hoping to basically get the cops attention uh-huh. and, and also slow the cop down to give the other people time to actually grab Carmisi. Okay. Okay. Them. Okay. So here's what happens is everyone's kind of arriving on the scene at the same time. Um, yeah. Who's moving to intercept the cop? Uh, I was going to do that, but if okay. processor is doing that, I will also be okay with that. Okay, okay. So processor, you're pulling up forward, and sleeper, you're coming to a stop near the side of the road. Processor, as you're approaching, what you see is it looks like a uh, it looks like one of those sort of road like a sports car 
black paint uh, with you see the Oregon State Police or the Washington State Police, uh, the uh, the thing on the on the side of the car. As it's pulling up, you see the car comes to a stop and all of a sudden just banks up and starts uh, converting right in front of you. Just oh. and you see Nightbeat come sliding to a stop, skidding across the road as sparks flying up underneath his feet. Night Beats comes to a dead stop. You see Night Beats Autobot symbol blazoned on his chest. And as he stops in front of you, Processor, and you come to a stop, he just looks at you disdainfully and folds his arms and just <laughs> judgment in his ocular sensors as he stares at you and says, what would you have done if I had been a human law enforcement officer? Uh, Well, you know, I was going to try something, but uh, you're not. So let's just not think about hypotheticals. All right. Let's not. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hop out of a uh, processor's recycling container. OK. And, uh, <laughs> and just kind of look over at where uh, Carmisi has has spun out like again just like this sort of beige dust cloud drifting away where you see a totaled autobot in the in the ravine down below well i guess i get an energon cube but i didn't want it like this yeah the energon tree oh, yeah uh, i heard about that and you and bumblebee aren't getting anything and he glances <laughs> down into the ravine and goes oh carmisi uh, also, if if I once I see that it's just night beat, I'm gonna continue at like forty <laughs> to where our original agreed finish line was. Um, maybe even thirty, like whatever whatever is a nice flow of traffic, casual pace. To okay, win the win the race. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, as you're pulling up, night beat says, "All right, let's get them in the back of processor and back to the arc." Optimus was requesting all of you, and I think a transmission was sent by Bumblebee. And, this is going to set us back. Smile. <laughs> Let's go. Cut to. Carmisi, when you come back online, we're going to forego the healing and damage rules here. We're going to say it takes a few hours, but when you're when the lights in your eyes reactivate and your ocular processors begin to once again receive data of everything around you, you are in bot mode laying on what appears to be a large metal slab and you see Ratchet looking down at you with a small smile on his face. Ratchet, of course, being the sort of the combat medic of the Autobots. Right next to him, though, also a combat medic for the Autobots is Processor, who is in bot mode. Um, and Processor, go ahead and describe yourself in bot mode, if you would, please. You're rather large, if I remember correctly. Right. Well, uh, he is a monolith, uh, which is the largest class that you can be. So that's, well, you know, uh, and his... Optimus his, size. His, yeah, and his bot mode um, reflects that. So okay. you, he still keeps the, the white and green... Um, coloring of his um, of his auto mode, uh, but you see a kind a kind face, one that lived for many millennia in in Cybertron, who uh, is now rediscovering his skills upon awakening. So, what, back on Cybertron, uh, processor skills were second to none, but within the millions of years of sleep. Uh, and now reawakening soon, since we're level one, he is rediscovering things, learning everything that he knows from Ratchet, but um, but also a, a distant memory, some some memory banks that are being processed, that are being that are being accessed, uh, are slowly coming back online, but they're not quite there yet. Okay. You Ratchet, of course, um, all, the alt mode for Ratchet is basically an ambulance, like a big white ambulance. Uh, in this mode, Ratchet is red and white with uh, this sort of V-shaped uh, symbol on his on the top of his forehead. You can see the Autobot symbol blazoned on his chest right in front of like a windowed looking like chest. And he's glancing down at you, Carmisi, with a sly smile on his face. And he goes, well, Carmisi, that might be a record. I think hmm. this is the most times I've had to bring an Autobot back online in a one year period. Uh, that, that can't be that can't be real. That's that's got to be like a fake statistic, right? Mm, let's see. And he looks over at the monitor where you see all of your vitals oh. being displayed to the bars and whatnot. He says, mm, 
No, this is seven times. Sounds about hmm. right. And does does anybody else know about this? Is just like public knowledge. Oh, I I don't think anybody else knows about that. Doctor cool. patient Could- confidentiality and all. That's when you notice, Carmisi, that you are surrounded by sleeper and derailleur and processor. Like your squad is here looking at you yeah. with some concern as you're laying on the table. And and the ratchet looks back at them and then looks back at you and says, "Well, aside from them, I guess." Yeah, yeah. Um, so hey, um, Bumblebee should probably never hear about this. Do we agree about uh, about that as a team? Well, I guess that depends on whether or not Night be told everybody, which Night according Beat to my there. data, what when? Well, how much do you remember exactly? Uh, I remember winning the race. And then Sleeper tried to hit my bumper and I went flying off the road. Also, it might have been a little bit wet on the ground. So I spun out a bit. I think I did a lot of really cool flips, like impressive. Um, the ones you kind of see in those films where there's explosions. I don't know. Did, was there an explosion when I landed? He I opens his part. mouth to reply to you when you hear Nightbeat in the corner of the room entering. He says, impressive is not the word I would use for it. Oh, um, <clears throat> comes to a stop and puts his hands on his hips and says, all right, enough of this. Optimus has been wanting to speak to all of you for a while now, and you don't like to keep Big Red waiting. Let's oh. go. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. Let's go. Are they good to go? Ratchet shrugs and says, yes, but I couldn't fix the paint issues or some of the what? scratches. What? So for now, Carmesi, I'm afraid. Like that scratch and that scratch? <laughs> you look down. Oh man, you are scraped to high heaven. Carmisi, as you look at your as you look at your externals, um, Ratchet's done a wonderful job putting you back together again. Your joints, everything, pretty impressive. But oh man, yeah, you need you need to get you need to get fixed up on that end. Oh, I can't go out like this. You've been uh, scraped up. Uh and I I uh I walk up and I gay and I say, hey, good race. And I offer a fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 won, I won, right? It was a good race. I think the rules <laughs> of the race, though, are that you have to cross the finish line in one piece. Also, I actually crossed the finish line. Good race. Darn it! Oh, come on! <laughs> like a piece of pain flex off oh no <laughs> yeah and it's important to know that the the coloration of a cybertronian this is not paint not as like, you know it. Yeah. this is literally this is literally in the living metal of your body to have it have been scraped to the point where it's no longer completely visible to the base underneath you are realizing carmisi you must have really taken a spill because you are scraped up bad even though ratchet's in a wonderful job repairing you no dents no dings but yeah you need to be you need a bath <laughs> basically <laughs> um Hot bath. You can hear the clinking sound of uh, Nightbeat's foot as he's getting more and more impatient. Just like, are um, we done being charming? Can we go now? Optimus yeah. is waiting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna be the last one. Uh, Driller, I'm just gonna be right behind you. It's not gonna help. You're bigger than me. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You you take away from how I look. You know. I don't want to. I don't want to be near, near sleeper, and nobody can see me when I'm behind processor. I need to be seen at least a little. I just start and, walking. Okay. <laughs> As y'all enter into the main area, this is the main compound where the Autobots are constantly meeting—a a space where it's sort of like the war room. In this space, um, a lot has been recovered and repaired as much as possible, but the inside of the arc is actually quite sparse to what it used to be. And the amenities in here for you guys is it's all sort of still being rebuilt and repaired and put back together again. In this space, though, is sort of like an amphitheater style lookout where you are all where Autobots can assemble and receive any kind of combat meetings or data informations or briefings of any kind. Right now, though, the room is largely empty, save for two Autobots. One is a small yellow Autobot about the same size as Carmisi with a amused look on his face as Bumblebee turns and looks right at you, Carmisi, and just goes, oh, no, (laughs) and puts his hand over his mouth as he's looking at you. But standing next to him, towering overhead at about the same height as Processor, is the iconic figure of Optimus Prime himself. Um, 
Optimus stands in front of the large computer display with holographic data coming up all over the place. This computer that he's in front of that branches out from the wall encompasses the heartbeat of the arc itself. This is Teletran 1. This is the AI that basically is the governing uh, uh, artificial intelligence and has been the key ally for the Autobot's survival. Um, Optimus turns and looks at all of you. He is notoriously hard to read, always has been. <laughs> Bumblebee, on the other hand, is just shaking his head and staring at you, Carmesi. And as you all enter the room and he goes, <clears throat> so I understand that Earthlings have a sport called gymnastics. Were you maybe getting confused between that? That's enough, Bumblebee. Optimus Prime just cuts him off. <laughs> uh, Bumblebee says, <laughs> sorry, "Sorry, Prime. Just, um, just uh, you know, racers got a joke. You know, little inside joke there. All right, uh, steps aside. Optimus turns and looks at you, Carmesi, and says, "How are you feeling, Carmesi?" Um, uh, my, my, my pride is injured and by pride, I mean my, my exterior, uh, but interior working excellent. You know, I'm, I'm really trying to win races. Yeah. About that night beat pipes up as he comes approaching you all from behind prime. I've been monitoring this group for a while now, and they've just been doing a lot of racing and endangering the, the directive that you've given all no, of us. No. No, 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 no. I personally think that all of them, specifically Carmesi and Sleeper, need to be subjected to disciplinary action. And I'll be back in storage for another 20 years. I can't go into storage. Will I look like you? Prime raises his hand and says, calm down, everyone. No one's being disciplined. The reason why you're racing is because none of you have been utilized. Processor, derailleur, Sleeper, Carmesi. The four of you have been trying to do the best you can with me not giving you any meaningful tasks. We've been trying to lay low, so I've been using our resources sparingly, but that time has passed. Our numbers are thin right now. I have too many Autobots on a mission, and something's come up. So I'm calling you to the plate, as they say. Uh, Each of you realize sir, yes, Optimus sir. is about to give you all a mission. <laughs> all right. Um, Bumblebee kind of looks at all of you and just gives like a just like a sneaks and a thumbs up. Night beat, however, looks indignant and shakes his head and says, I hope you don't regret this, Prime. And just storms out. <laughs> don't mind him. Just like you, he has been restless. The Decepticons have not engaged us for some time now, and we need more intelligence as to what they're up to. Thankfully. Teletron one has helped us come up with that intelligence. He turns and you see him press a couple of holographic buttons and you see the map of the earth <laughs> appear on this giant hologram in the middle of the room spinning around. You see near where you all are uh, near Portland city, the city of Portland, you see uh, a little blinking dot and says Teletran has discovered the existence of what seems to be a signal of some kind that we believe is Cybertronian in origin. To make matters more difficult, we discovered this signal because the Decepticons already seem to be aware of it. Oh, no. They They've been the sending scouts. Us? What was that? They got the jump on us? Apparently. We're going to have to take the initiative here and seize the opportunity to get into the main hub of where the humans live and find out what we can about this strange signal. Whatever it is, the Decepticons seem to be pretty convinced that it's important enough to risk exposure. That sounds um, awesome. I cannot I mean, stress this enough, <laughs> Autobots. He looks at all of you meaningfully and he says, we need to maintain secrecy at all costs. Do what you can. Go find out the nature of the signal and report back. You got it. Dismissed. Yes, yes, sir. He uh, turns back to Teletran and Bumblebee looks at Prime with kind of like a worried look on his face and then motions you all to follow him as he starts heading out of the room. Excellent. I uh, immediately follow Bumblebee and as soon as we are out of earshot of, of Optimus Prime, I'm like, you owe me an Energon treat. I'll give you an Energon treat. Yes. <sighs> 
But first, I just wanted to apologize. Um, I hope you guys aren't offended by how abrupt Prime was just now. He's been really worried lately. He's been a little short with people. So if he wasn't too giving on the details, if you have any mission critical questions, you can ask me before you head out. Uh, what, what's going on? What's He just folds his arms and says, Prime's been really focused on Decepticon activity of late. It's been unusual how quiet things have been. And it's making him uneasy. We haven't had a lot of good intel on what their activities have been in the past few weeks. So Prime's become a little edgy. Huh. Maybe discovering the source of this signal put him at ease. Yeah. Yeah, that's and that's going to be what we're we're going to do that. Well, that's we are going to make his day. I've got a question. Yeah. Could, in in their bot in their bot form, could the other three members of our team fit inside the back of my truck? If I'm Ooh, uh, you're Ooh. huge, correct? Your yeah. size is huge. Mm-hmm. So I obviously derailer could could do it. What is everybody else just like large or average? Y'all are probably common size, correct? Uh, I uh, might be large. Let me double check that because it's based on your origin, right? Mm-hmm. I'm large. Yeah. I would say you could probably, f- yeah, you're, I think the rest of you are large and I think derailleur is common size. Mm-hmm. So you could probably fit, you could fit one of, you could fit one of you. In bot mode, I'm common size. Okay. okay. What about so, Carmisi? Carmisi is large, I believe. Or in are you in, mode? are you, what are you, what size are you in bot mode? You're probably common size as well. Carmisi it says large mode. on champion. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. In which case, okay. In which case um, you could, you could definitely fit sleeper and uh, well, it would be a tight fit, but you might be able to fit derailleur back there as well. <laughs> but I couldn't fit Carmisi and nah. derailleur. No, right? or, uh, no. Yeah. Carmisi is going to be a little too large. Derailleur can fit back there. No problem. Yeah, but it's probably it's you're probably going to only be able to fit sleeper. You're probably only be able to fit derailleur in the back. All right, which is fine. I do, I can't you can't really like dim my shimmer. I think that's how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Derailleur is probably the derailleur is probably the ideal one to pick if you wanted to because it's it's a little little as y'all are driving down the highway. It's probably a little more subtle to not see derailleur driving on the highway at the speeds of a uh, of a. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, some like e- e-bikes are great. Like they, you you can really, you know, get speeds on those, but not to, not sixty miles an hour. <laughs> just 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 so we're clear, though, even though a typical e-bike cannot do that, derailleur is an Autobot and a Cybertronian. You can. I absolutely <laughs> so, can. But so, that, de- that defeats yeah. the purpose of trying to remain. Uh, yeah. Inconspicuous. And mm-hmm. it's also important to note, just for the narrative, so y'all can keep in mind, your hollow matter humans that are appearing in your seat, who are you essentially, a projection of you, mm-hmm. they will behave the way uh, they will behave in a way that coincides with the way the interior of the car behaves. So, in other words, try That's to picture something. this. Like this is like a video game. So try to picture this. If Sleeper is doing a stunt maneuver. But he has described his hollow guy as leaning back in the seat with just one hand on the wheel. His hollow human is doing high speed stunts that require two hands with a single hand. So it's going to look super cartoony and rapid and just while he's got like a calm look on his face. And it's worth noting that is in keeping with how Autobots perceive humans. They're like, oh, yeah, sure. This is normal, right? Humans can do that, right? So just to keep that in mind, because that is going to play a role here if y'all are trying to be in disguise how your hollow humans react to what's going on could be detected. So just be aware. (laughs) Um, But yes, you can probably fit, uh, you can definitely fit derailleur into the back processor. What I was thinking was we could be as inconspicuous as possible when a recycling truck or a trash truck goes through a neighborhood and nobody pays it a second mind. They might be annoyed by the loud noise it makes rumbling through their neighborhood, but I can go almost anywhere without anybody uh, being suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> so just throwing that out there for trying okay. to be, you know. Do we have like 
do we know specifically where this is? Like, is it rural? Yes. Is it suburban? No. Is it urban? This is this is definitely this is what looks like a it looks like it's towards the outskirts of Portland, the city of Portland. Hmm. So it's in one of it looks like judging from the the layout, and this would be so, a question that Bumblebee would be able to answer. It looks like according to the layout into the topographic scans they have of that portion of Earth, uh, and a quick zoom in, it looks like it is some kind of garage or some kind of like auto body shop of some kind. Mm, okay. The information is slightly outdated, but it looks like a like a two-story building that's large enough that it has what looks like two garage door openings and is on a small lot. You can mm. see what looks like spare parts and tires collecting out front of a chain link fence. Okay. Oh, it is, oh, it is urban on. for sure. There's going to be humans around there. Mm. Not as many as you might typically find, but there are going to be humans for sure. Okay. Well, I think, well, Processor, you can get me in at least to get a look around. It wouldn't be too out of the ordinary, I think, for, you know, alt modes like us to be seen around there. Yeah. Right, right. It's a garage. Mm-hmm. I and mean, both of, both of you raised. Great. With Carmisi all scraped up, she could be going there to try to get some work done. It could be going there. <laughs> you think I would go to a place like that? Well, you could pretend, can't you? We're trying to be on a spy mission here. Um, I'm going to add, as a storyteller, since we're all kind of new to this game, that is absolutely something that I would say, yes, you would gain an upshift and your disguise check. Tell me about the upshifts and the downshifts again. I was yeah, thinking sure. about it, but I want it to be kind of articulated. Yeah. So upshifts and downshifts is a really cool way to sort of like play with uh, ever shifting circumstances in the game. So upshifts and downshifts, there's, there's two different modes to this upshift and downshift is specifically referring to your skill dice. So an upshift, if you have a D six and you gain an upshift, the D six becomes a D eight mm -hmm. and vice versa. That's how upshifts and downshifts work. So it's a great way to sort of slightly increase your chances. And then there's edges and snags, which is basically rolling a D20 and picking the best or worst between the two, depending on which ones you get. Edges and snags are typically used for more of like chance like something out of your control is taking place like all of a sudden like like heavy sleets of there's like sheets of rain start interfering with your ocular vision i might give you a snag so you're rolling one mm. less but things like scrapes all over your body like the slight damage you took from the road it's true pulling up to this body shop you might actually gain a bonus to your disguise check as you were riding up because you look like a damaged vehicle <laughs> Uh, my pride hurts, but you know, it's uh, oh, Carmisi knows that it's the right thing. Fine, 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 processor, but don't, don't comment, just don't, just don't want to bring too much attention to it. No, it's really right. cool when you look the way we do now that you and I are of the same look. Uh, <sighs> humans what? really don't care. Usually they walk by and they just shake their head. I think it's a shaking their head of acknowledging of how cool we are. No, nobody's going to take selfies next to me anymore. No, no, it's cool. They they have this new term uh, that I think means it's really cool. It's called dusty and old. I think I need a moment. Go on ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, Bumblebee yeah. says, all right, before y'all go, can I get you anything? Do you need it? Oh, wait. Right. Uh, pulls that a small glowing, uh, like slip of energon and hands it to you. Not enough yes. to gain a point on, but no. it is, it's enough. To, it's a nummy little snack. And he just What's hands it. We, we were placing out. bets on who was going to win the race. Uh, I, I look at Bumblebee and go, you bet against me? You bet for me? Bumblebee shrugs and says, I don't know. I, I, I kind of double I've, back. I do this thing where it's like, you want to pick the person that you don't think is going to necessarily wait, be no, the winner. No, stop talking. Like, just, wow. No, I, I didn't hear that. I'm ready for the mission. Bumblebee turns and looks at you processor and just pats you on the arm and says, take care of them. Okay. You got it. Well, you know me, I'm not really much for wagering or gambling. I'm just steady as she goes. 
he gives you a nod and then nods to the rest of every, nods to the rest of you and heads back into the room you have free reign in a mission to the city of portland it's about 30 32 miles from where you are right now okay roughly. um <laughs> taking all my willpower to say that like uh, we're not racing there <laughs> we'll take no. our time we'll follow the rules before, yeah. we, before we leave base though should we try to uh, acquisition some gear to take with us uh, yeah I gotta I gotta look into uh, hard points I think uh, <laughs> and that might be helpful so that's a great idea yeah, hard points uh, typically are actually part of character creation. You usually want to decide like what kind of weapons your character is going to have. Plus, it's also important to know that you get two different types of hard points. There is the external hard points, which is like blasters that you might be carrying um, that you use in bot mode. Like literally, like Optimus Prime has that big freaking iconic rifle that he uses. Mm -hmm. And then there's internal hard points, which are like Starscream's arm cannons that uh, he can use in both bot mode and in fighter in his alt mode. So um, cool. those those two are going to be highly important. But yes, you guys actually do have uh, some of the uh, options here to go into the armory and start uh, seeing if you can acquisition. It's, it's going to be based. Uh, it's going to be based a little bit on your rank as an Autobot and like what you can pull together. But you will be able to acquisition some equipment if you guys need it, if you don't have any blasters or anything like that. So with that, a lot of you decide to head to the armory and Carmisa, you're just kind of moving your arms around realizing we'll say in the narrative as you're moving your arms around the blasters that you had installed on your on your arms have been completely demolished ratchet was not able to repair them so they're gonna have to be removed as hard points and reinstalled in something else so that is gonna be part of our equipment purchasing but we're gonna do that in our next episode. We've been introduced to our Autobots. We played a little bit around with the racing rules. We did some converting. We met Optimus Prime. We got a mission. And now y'all are heading into Portland to find out what this mysterious signal is. And you can bet, based off of what Prime has told you all, the Decepticons will be somewhere in the vicinity. You won't be the only bots sneaking around in disguise. You're going into an unknown situation in a situation where you're going to be forced into keeping your alt modes so that your bot modes remain hidden. It's going to be interesting. But that's going to do it I'm for now. I'm excited! I <laughs> uh, hope you guys had fun. This is our first play test station. We're just kind of working out the, the kinks in the, in the joints here, trying to get everything up and moving. Uh, join us for the next episode as the Autobots engage in their first mission. We'll see you then. <laughs>